Good evening from beautiful Åland, Finland. We have been kayaking and exploring spectacular places around here for the past few days. How are all of you today? Good evening to all. We are staying at Hotel Archipelag, and our room has its own balcony overlooking the spectacular sea. The staff was extremely helpful and friendly. The breakfast was excellent with fresh squeezed orange juice. We are happy that our vegan options and local specialties are available. We enjoyed the two swimming pools and the sauna. Anyway, here we are today to talk about passion. I think as a human being, the one thing that I learned is the more passion I had for whatever I did, the better I succeeded in dreaming in my world. One of our affiliates had a passion for real estate. He went out and knocked on doors and gave out flyers that were something like how to remove stains and put them by the laundromat, what to do in the event of an earthquake, and all things people would keep with his name and photo on the bottom. That got him busy with listings all over the Hercules area of California, and it kept and it kept him alive and well and earning money for almost fifteen years. He mailed periodically something to his clients to let them know what he had listed, and people felt his passion for something that he was enjoying which gave him freedom in time. Because in real estate, he didn't have to work very much. He did this and that and spent a lot of quality time taking care of his three children. Now he has a successful consulting business, which he started four years ago. Similarly, as Serana had a passion for teaching kids and was a school teacher for a decade before discovering her passion for psychic work. I put all of my time and love and energy into learning how to be a psychic and how to read people and how to help them in some way release all patterns that didn't work for them. I loved that even more than school teaching. And in the passion of me, I gave up school teaching and became a full-time psychic. I reached out and started teaching classes in California. Lo and behold, out of the passion of me, the classes came together. I was living in Fremont at the time. People found me from San Francisco and I drove north. And then over in Sausalito, I drove west and then somewhere kind of local. I had the psychic classes in my home, found a group up in Napa, and they came to see me and I came to see them. I was absolutely stoked that I could have a life as a psychic and a teacher and a healer instead of school teaching. And then I found my passion for writing and would write and write and write of my ascension experiences with my sources and spiritual guides. I didn't self-publish the ascension books until I created the Aligning with Earth website out of my passion and love for ascension. And as I went 
into light wave synergy. I had a passion for self-realization that was showing up as information from above the human system. Most people don't understand self-realization. They understood ascension, which was Shatha work. But the self-realization work of Shatha, they didn't grasp because it's a level above humanity and not necessarily in the world as we know it within people. Only about 10,000 people really understand realization on this plane of reality because they too attune to a reality above us. Even so, it's still a passion of mine to share with you what I do or the stories I've been going through and also the information on star seeds that are to help you. It's a smaller group that but I'm still very passionate in what I do and it carries me forward through my difficult moments of my own transformation. This is not an easy path the work of a yogi, and I wouldn't recommend it actually for anyone, but I love the passion of the belief in understanding myself or understanding you as we work together in the Dream Time Ascension School or DAS. So passion has been a huge assemblage point for me for over 30 years. Each of you have an assemblage point that is like the rudder or rudder of your reality and it carries you forward in each thing you attempt and everywhere you go and whatever it is you believe in or you need to know. It carries you forward and for me, passion grew to be my main assemblage point at about age 22 and for each it is that way. But passion can become an assemblage point that you motion into if you choose for it. And we'll explain how and why that's very helpful. Passion is like a spark all in and of itself. In the spark you care and you sway and you love what you're thinking about first. And then you love what you do next out of what you loved about what you thought about and then in it you start to sway as you create what you have a passion for you sway up and sway up and sway up in light until you have this big birth and birth of a space to allow the life force of you to grow So first of all, in a state of passion, you have more life force to renew and revive the body. So your health improves. If you have lost your health or you feel like you've lost your health, find your passion for something and in the passion of what you're doing, the body revives due to increasing life force. But also because the body's 
excited to be alive. So it says, no, it's not time to pass the physical or go do something like that. It's time to love me and do what I really was meant to do in this life of mine. And then in the passion, it continues to build into dream stream to augment the creative project that you've assumed. So whatever creative project it is, whether it's to write a book or write music or speak your truth or find a new direction in your life that you're studying about, or if it's something else that you're doing in your life that you just feel grand about. Whatever it is, in that passion and in that way, the dream stream triples. So if you're struggling financially, you don't have passion for whatever it is you're thinking of doing. Therefore, as you find the passion and you ignite it, and you start to sway into whatever you're doing, then suddenly you find the dream stream in order to push the dream into the physical. And it will wrap around those that perhaps you have a project to share. Dream stream has to wrap around people in order to ignite an exchange or something that you feel deeply in yourself. And you say, no, this just has to be profitable or suitable to, to whatever I'm here to do because I'm in love with what I'm doing. And somehow that dream stream in the ignition of passion is filled with passion too. And then people find passion in what you're doing. When I started my Ascension website, that's what it was. I had such passion for what I was doing. It would inaugurate passion with every article I wrote because I felt deeply about what I was sharing. Then passion caught on the audience until we built up to a very large website that had maybe 150,000 followers of deep care of spiritual work and then it spread everywhere on other websites that people got to know what I had to share too. But I know the times of ascension aren't necessarily light-based. And so I had to motion on into another level of passion or I die. Therefore, I hit a crucible of existence where I lost my passion and I either had to respark another level of passion or I would pass the physical plane. So I said, no, I have something more to realize. So I need to find passion in what I'm doing and what sparked all the other, and that sparked all the other written material and work on self-realization that we shared in addition to the ascension materials. Therefore, for those with a passionate action stance on life, you have to keep finding passion for what you're doing or it's time to leave the physical. That's kind of a hard decision unless there's nothing more to do and you're complete. So here's what I have to say to you about passion, having been in the passion of my life unfolding 
for a long, long time. It's a beautiful way to live when you can find the spark and ignite it and no uncertainty that what you're doing is divine or has something to share or help people with or cause them to feel beautiful. That can be true for anything that you do because there's many things you can find passion for in this life of yours. And if you're doing something you've done long term, you can change companies or directions by finding another corporation or another push to find and ignite your passion again about something else you're doing in relation to the world around you. And if that's good, then that's good for you and you feel it in your body. You feel it in your bones and you find a way to do something amazing with this life of yours. I'll tell you about it in eight steps because first, you inaugurate the passion of a vision that you wish to bring about. It could be a new job or a spark to move you someplace amazing or something else you want to create or foster in this life of yours. So the vision comes first and it sparks you in the passion of an imaginary situation where that work could come to be. Then the second step is that the passion ignites you enough that you choose to do something to bring about a change in your life that can allow that vision to come to be. If it's something you think about and you love to do, then perhaps you just do it. If it's something you need training about, then you do go train for it. And then allow your life to shift directions and go into another place that you can be in the passion of you instead of something else which can be rather boring, sometimes depressing and sometimes not in love with life at all. Then the third step is to realize your vision of either the education that you need to follow, the passion of your vision, or whatever it is you need to set it up so that it can come to be for you in your life. Wherever that action is, it has to be within reason with what it is that you can do in the region that you live potentially and also what it is that you could create for yourself that would give you an ignition of passion perhaps in association with others. Then once you realize what you need to realize to have the vision that you have, the fourth step is to go about starting to actualize it. Now in my own life, I actualize myself as a psychic by studying with a psychic teacher for several years. Sometimes the actualization of your vision for yourself is a long, is a long project because maybe become, becoming a minister or whatever it is you think you are going to do takes more time than you think. 
but in the passion of the vision and the joy of the education, you sustain yourself in the passion of what you believe you're going to do in this life until another level of passion can take flight and then take you to another level of manifestation in actualizing another another dream for you to fondle and caress in and sway in and then inspire others to share in too and that's how passion works the passion can reach out to many in an audience of whatever it is you choose to do and so after the education is finished, if that's what it takes, then you have to spawn either a job that's related or figure out what to do that you're going to do in relation to that, that can work for you. And in it is another vision that you will see and you will go into and hallucinate about until you realize what it is you're going to do and then figure it out from there. Now, my own story is kind of unusual in that I envision teaching others because I was already a psychic and a healer. I kept having these classes in my vision and there was a small group of people and then a little bit bigger. I didn't know how to even begin to bring about that. And finally, it was Babaji who said to me, when the teachers are ready, the students appear. So I was driving around San Jose and San Francisco. Then I walked into this store and met this amazing woman who just suddenly opened up everything you could imagine to let me teach a little workshop in her store. It's a mineral shop filled with all kinds of goodies and I bought a few things. I knew then that I have to leave school teaching and suddenly there I was teaching a psychic class. Suddenly there I was healing all these people that she knew. They go out a couple times a week just to have lunch together. And not only that, but the goddess family of my heart showed up amongst her friends and we just loved each other in the passion of the belief in the concept of ascension. And so my work as a spiritual teacher took flight and other things opened up after that. So in the passion of you, you create the right circumstance to lead the way to whatever you're going to do next. If it's a relocation, that's needed, that will show up and eventually that was true for me too in moving to Hawaii. So in the next level of actualization, the dream unfolds and flowers until you gather the right constituency of participants to enjoy this way of you. 
if you're a singer and a dancer, you show up someplace to perform, and more and more people start to follow you and tip you. Then the next thing you know, you're doing weddings and other receptions and other things that people need beautiful music for. The next thing you know, you record an album. Next thing you know, the album is submitted, and one song or two songs catch major popularity. And the next thing you know, big audiences are like swaying with you. If the passion for what you're doing is huge, then the larger the audience you may catch to follow you. And so it is with passion. It can unfold for dance. It can unfold for written work. It can unfold for cooking, and the creation of your own restaurant. There was an amazing Italian couple in Hawaii that opened up their own restaurant after he got his chef's. Degree. They had investors that helped them. That place was popular, and the food was absolutely amazing. They moved to a beautiful part in Manoa Valley, which was kind of reclu reclusive, with many. Surrounding trees and had a beautiful deck. It was everything you could imagine a beautiful Italian restaurant to be. And in a passion of the caress, people come because it's not just the food. The food's infused with light, and it fills up the abdomen, and it feels good and tastes good. Is also the sway of the place, or the region that they live. That's divine. That they feel as they come to participate in a lovely meal. That's the way passion works. Not everybody is passionate in their restaurant work, and if you find a passionate restaurant or chef. You know it instantly by the taste of the food, and the quality of everything in the building, including the light wave sway that shows up in that kind of cadenza of self, is called a cadenza of self. There are many things you can do, and find passion about. Some find passion in your garden, as you swing and sway with your garden. Suddenly, your kale is three times bigger, and suddenly the carrots are enough to choose, and suddenly the potatoes are huge. Everything you plant just seems to bloom. It's a beautiful garden. And it seems to self tend to itself in some ways, because in the passion of you, you love it enough to allow that to be true, and so it's that way with passion. If you are passionate about your massage, because you really enjoy what it does for you. And for others, people will feel that passion and love you as a deuce. They'll just feel the enjoyment you receive in what you give, and what they give back in the light wave sway of themselves with you, and them in this cocoon of a place where they can feel nurtured. Is all beautiful and can grow from working for a spa 
or working for yourself in a much larger economy. Perhaps out of your passion and massage, you turn around and become a teacher of massage for others to ignite the passion and those that can find it within themselves. Not all can find passion within themselves in this society by and large. One out of a thousand in the non C system in the non C variety of incarnation can find passion for something that they choose to do. Therefore, even in a massage school, you might be one of the unique ones finding passion for everything about what you're learning and little for and little do others do. And that's just the nature of passion in the society that's very limited. Most people feel like living machines doing this and that day in and day out and aren't willing to grow into something bigger than what they know because it's too frightening. That's very sad. So what stands behind the loss of passion is sometimes fear and sometimes grief that you've had a very big loss of some kind in your life, whether it's a loss of work you loved or a loss of a partner, loss of a child. Sometimes that can trigger passion to die for a time until you reignite it again and find your way. Never think that the passion is dead forever if that has come to be in your existence. It's never dead really and truly. So passion can be reinstated and if you've never really had a passionate expression, then the assemblage point of passion will allow you to experience that perhaps for the first, for the very first time in your life. And suddenly you find something that you absolutely believe in. Now it could even be that in some ways you believe in the work that we're doing in light wave synergy and that is a passion of yours and if so i bless you and the desire for me for you is to expand your passion in another another direction two that allows you to augment something new in your live stream and new in the sway of you and new in the divine timing of you to bring about something else that makes you feel beautiful or does something else in this life of yours. Passion is not really anything you would ever imagine other than a belief in something that that you feel is grand. Passion is a belief in something you feel is grand. And in the grandness of the belief and in the actualization of the dream stream of what you have passion for, it sparks others to feel passion for something when maybe in their life they've never felt passion before ever. And so they fall in love with your work or they fall in love with your dance or your music or your cooking or whatever it is you have to share. And suddenly in the love of you and the love of what you believe in, the love of the passion of it all 
it all works. It all synergizes, and it's like magic, because any undercurrent of what you passionately believe in, there's magic. The magic sparked something inside the hearts and minds about the people that shared in that magic that caused them to sway, and even another way. That's very much more a flower of light motion. So, in the passion and the ignition, and the sharing of what you do, suddenly people find passion too, and then they flower. You can see this in gifted artisans of Shatta. Orchestration and music. I'm thinking of Peter, Paul, and Mary. They were passionate of their anti-war stance and other things, and that passion caught on large audiences worldwide. They were a passionate stance of shatter to try to dissipate. A major world war over Vietnam, and he needed it that way. People sang and swayed with it, and took an anti-war stance, and it extinguished the war before it could take flight, in a more difficult manner. There are artisans. That do that today in Shatter less and less, because Shatter is a dying program on this planet of ours. Another one is coming along, which is more about self-realization, called Sosa, and that program will inspire things. That may be a similar to what Asarana writes about in poetry, or poetic motion of something that is harmonious in the way that is produced. That may or may not be inspirational to humanity at large, because they are not living in the motions. Of self-realization and light, at all, they really kind of sit underneath that bandwidth, and they are more interested in the current observations of whatever society is focused upon. That's unfortunate, but that's just the nature of the genetics of the human kingdom. On Earth, so passion has the opportunity, if it's the right way, to take people in big directions that are different and cause mass change. That's what Shatta was very good at, to try to keep world peace, in order to try to bring about. A sense of a certain level of abundance that everybody could sway in and work, and perhaps pay the rent or mortgage, and basically do okay in life. His work has fostered big change since 1945, in the devastation of Hitler, and the Americans. Choice to ignite two bombs over Japan. That was perhaps the biggest single disaster of this planet, and then all the nuclear testing didn't help either. The planet itself has lost its passion to exist, and that's hard to imagine. It's not just the large numbers of humans 
drilling into it and cutting down all the trees. That's a part of it too. I mean, you could imagine if you were cut down and chopped and slammed and bombed and whatever else is going on, including the decadence of pollution from the waste bin of the planet regurgitated as petroleum jelly and all the other things that manifest. The planet itself is losing its passion, is losing its way, its way, is losing its divine timing, and is cascading down into a time of extinction that may take a thousand years for the creatures of the planet. But beyond that, it becomes a frozen mass or mass perhaps not unlike Neptune and then later like Pluto in the end. And so we say to you that even though the planet is losing its passion, that doesn't mean you as a tiny, a tiny human living on it has to do that. But many of you like to transfuse with nature, and maybe you're depressed, maybe you're anxious, maybe you're unwell. That's the problem with transfusing with nature, whose lost is passion for existence. Its lost is passion to live. Some of you may even feel suicidal in trying to transfuse with nature because that's where nature's at. Some of you were better at transfusing in other augmented systems of Tao and feel Tao's way. And in the Tao's way, you don't lose your sense of who you are and are less likely to feel the loss of the caress of the whole, the loss of the light of the whole, and the loss of the life of the planet. Therefore, many in the ascension experience went into nature to find your passion, and it was still there some as a repose of other time periods where nature was the predominant motion on the planet. And you went into it, loved it, and learned to sway. You found your way to wherever you were going, and you went through your release into forgiveness and compassion. Then suddenly that went away, and you started to transfuse at the same time, and perhaps life has been very sorrowful ever since. And so our suggestion to you is to find another way to transfuse that's separate from the planet at this time. The Tao wish is to gift that to each of you that are listening to this pre-recorded webinar today because the truth is that humans are humans but you can transfuse with the star seeds and be blessed by the seed egg system that says love and sway in a divine timing with all that is and all that has ever been, ever. Any seed that has ever loved and caressed and been blessed and lived and flourished and found passion and fulfilled in their dreaming and then finally passed in the physical because life was through. So being the transfusion 
of the star seeds, and then it may be easier to find your passion in you. Passion is a motion of real beauty, in a kind of crimson peach color, whereas love is pink, passion is crimson peach. Peach is an amazing color to enter within, as you transfuse. Because it ignites the body to find passion about your life. So we're going to flourish that today in each of you listening to this verbal article to get the crimson in you and the pitch in you to ignite. Now you may want to buy. Some clothing in that color. Many yogis like the crimson orange color. They put their robes on, they shave their heads, and they om, and they do whatever they do. They om to sway. Om Ming can be a sway within the body. If you have aptitude in your bones to om and sway, and it can ignite the passion of you if there's crimson around. If you've never omed before, find a YouTube video of perhaps an organization of people in Tibet. On the pole that are oming, and try to sing along, and you can find instructions about it. Some. You can also look online for an album of oms and chants, and other things, and sway along, and sing along, and see if the reverberation of the om ignites. A passion in your bones to go do something new. Now, what Asarana used to do is find incredible melodies that were acoustic in the New Age channels of that time period. She just loved that music, and it caused her to sway in the passion of her life, and emerged. As something else, like a spiritual teacher and a healer in this lifeline of hers, for her that music inspired passion. For each, you find music that inspires passion, and we suggest you listen to that, and nothing else. If passion is your goal, get rid of any music. That really doesn't do it for you because it's not worth this igniting in somebody else' airstream of some musical channel, or some musical with lyrics, or whatever it is that doesn't feel the push to express the passion of you. Some of the young people are coming out. With very passionate kind of music, that it has a different beat to it. That was Shatar and Shatar's final expression of the love, of the passion, of the song and the melody. The young people of today, and Jack Johnson is one of those, and there are quite a few of those. They have. A new beat, and they have a new way of expressing. They express sometimes about the joy of existence, but also sometimes they weep with the sorrow of the loss of the planet, the loss, the loss of Shatar, and the loss of many things. And so it may be okay 
to listen to the positive side of their existence, but may be not good to listen to the negative side if that causes the passion of you to dissipate. So be careful with lyrics, melodies, and things that have a negative message because they're not good in light wave motion at all. They tend to repose their self and their airstream and then the next thing you know, you're depressed again. Therefore, passion can also be ignited through the act of dance. So if there's a particular kind of dance that allows you to find passion, you should go faster that and perhaps even take lessons. As Serena liked her hula dances and later she learned to light wave dance due to channeling primarily Shatar, who say this is a form of hula you're going to love. And it would ignite her passion every time she stood up in the living room and paraded herself as if she was on stage when she wasn't. But she had fun with it and it kept her going through some dismal times of transfusion too. So find a dance that works for you and learn to sway with it and exercise too. Some may find passion for yoga or some other stance of Eastern lower motion. If you look at the dance of the Thai people, Vietnamese people, or of the Chinese in relation to Buddha, it's kind of like a light wave dance except it has its own motions that are very graceful. And if you get a group of females on stage, it's very pretty. There can be a passion that shows up in that kind of dance, which is kind of a folk dance that you could learn. There are some folk dances that have passion in them and I think of the Russian dancers that could that would come on with their big boots and storm around the stage with passion. There's also the ballet of certain artisans that were just incredibly gifted and they get on stage. Next thing you know, you were in passion and in love with them. Then there were those dancers from Ireland with the metal toes and they'd storm all over the floor and then you check and you check and go into passion with them too. There may be dance videos you enjoy watching that inspire the passion of you to ignite so that then you can place it towards what you're going to do in your life after the show turns off. So that's a good way to ignite passion in you. It could also be that there's a form of exercise and nature that allows the passion of you to form also. One initiate has found it in downhill skiing for a time because she felt like a bird on her skis and that started her passionate change in life towards graphic design in her mid-twenties. She really didn't like working for the family hotel and lodging business anymore and needed to do something else. And the skiing helped her bridge into something else, something she was 
more passionate about which was graphic design. Anyway, whatever the passion it is, when you get into a passionate stance of something you like to do, it's going to ignite a passionate key that then you can motion forward in a direction that you are passionate about and not something else. You can't always predict how the dream is going to turn out, so find a sport you're passionate about. If it's riding bikes down the street, or if it's swimming for a time, or if it's skiing for s or something you find amazing as you get into nature, then go there and find your passion for life. Then turn it around and sway it into something else you're going to do and you'll be amazed at what you at what may show up as an opportunity for you that you weren't expecting at all. The only other potential passion and is not going to come out of the movie industry. It's sad to say that if you watch a movie that seems very passionate and you cry along with it and you feel something deep in you about it actually strips your passion and it dissipate and it disignites it within you so don't go the root of the media that's really not useful to you music is different because music isn't a cascade that strips generally it gives or you emulate the information of the music and the light wave motions and notions in the music. So if it's positive, it will have a positive effect. If it's negative, it won't. So stay away from negative music and that will be all the better for that too. There may be times that the love of your partner may inspire the passion of you to rise too. That happens for a time with Pear and Asarana. They love each other, and in the sway of the love of her twin, she found the passion over and over again of what she was teaching and writing about. That's one way twins can inspire each other to find passion in everything you do. You love each other, you sway together, and the passion ignites, and then you're up and running, running, doing something new. It can happen with a child too, that's a twin of yours. The child may inspire you to go do something new out of the passion of the love of their heart for you and the enthusiasm they still feel for their life. It can also happen with friends of deep kinship that want to sway and love and care about whatever you're sharing. And that can ignite the passion of you to take flight in your life. The point in all of this is to be with those you wish to be that make you feel whole and excited about what you're trying to do and perhaps let go of the others that disinspire you or drive you nuts 
somehow because they are too negative in their mindset and there's something wrong in their lives you can't fix? No one can really fix the life of another. Each has to take responsibility for why you're not passionate about what you're doing or who you're seeing or where you're living or whatever it is that's going on in your life. And if you're, pa- and if you're not passionate, uh, passionate about it, maybe it's time to take inventory and say, okay, I have to take inventory about why I feel blah and blue and nothing works for me, it seems. Where have I lost my passion about who I am and what I wish to do to make this world of mine magical again? In some sort of way, why am I like a child sucking on a lollipop and absolutely content feeling my direction and my way to grow in a way that's beautiful to share and to caress myself and then others who I draw to myself in the passion of what I have created. Whatever it is that you create, if you have a passion for it, it will have a debt tendency to sell or transport yourself into a circumstance where you can move your inventory and let go of the passion in the photo or in the art or in the silk painting or whatever or whatever you've created the pottery some beautiful sauces or something you've cooked? Whatever it is that you're putting on the county market, in the farmer's market stands of life, if you have passion about what you create, then it will always sell. That's beautiful for you to understand that they feel the passion and the caress of your goods and that's why they move and nothing else. In order to cause that, you have to really feel passionate about whatever you're creating. If you've been creating something for a long time and it's not moving in the marketplace, then you have to understand you've lost the passion behind it and to try something new or do something new that's really amazing for you to share and sell. Let people be the bee traders with you if they want to trade you for this and that. That perhaps they have made to in a state of passion and then it's all spread around the camp. That's how it used to be long ago in sea land, where seas tend to incarnate. They each create out of the passion of their body, mind, and soul, and in the passion it infuses the spirit, into the garment woven, or the food cooked, or the artisan piece generated, or whatever it is that they're creating in this way of themselves. In the passion of what each does, there's passion traded for passion because they will be trader society and not monetary bound. Money kills passion, unfortunately, in this period. And so 
you have to organize your thinking about what you're passionate about to not include money. And that's an odyssey all of its own. What Sir Rana did was she passed the money issue on to Pear to take care of their finances because he's fortunate enough to inherit money from his wealthy family. His wealth in this lifetime is due to thousand lifetimes of poverty of his ancestors. Therefore, thanks to Pear, Asarana is so blessed that she can just be passionate about what she writes and teaches on ascension and self-realization and fulfilling upon their global travel and service work together without having to deal with all of the stress of earning a living. Pear's passion is in managing and directing his green, ethical and sustainable organic coffee and tea company. Together, as Rana and Pear are directors of their Dream Time Ascension School, or DAS. The school is dedicated to gathering the map makers of Ascension to carve the Ascension map for Earth and humanity. If you're going to gather an audience that there's a passion that is group ordained and it's an assemblage point of group motion, if you're going to inspire a group in some way, you have to learn that motion. And as you do, whatever you're trying to cause will be grander in whatever it dreams dreams in this lifeline of yours. So if you're passionate about cooking and you end up a chef of a restaurant, suddenly you're acclaimed and the passion of you goes into the food and ignites a group system. Then there's more people coming and more recognition for everything you're doing. If you're passionate about some creative pro objective, then whatever you do suddenly comes into play and the interplay of all the non-physical who show up to create for you out of a state of passion. Because the crimson color may be more than anything called spirit towards matter. So you're here in crimson, orange, and spirit joins you and the angels show up and suddenly you're driven to paint this silk scarf in a state of passion. It's almost like they take your arm in hand and you're painting away and painting away and not even aware of what it is you're entirely creating until you're through. And you go, wow, that turned out really beautiful. That's passionate creation in action. Passionate creation with your writing, sewing, painting, dancing, playing music, cooking, or anything else you might do because they can spread into other occupations and we'll explain how that works in a minute here. When you're in that moment, it's like you're in an expanded time where time stands still. And you may notice that you're in no time and in no time suddenly the creative the creative act and you and the dream and spirit descends into matter. Suddenly you're creating in no time and you don't know where the time went, but you have this beautiful garment or scarf or music that you've composed or whatever it is that's shown. That's passionate action of creation in the joy of spirit into matter that shows about in the crimson ray of peach. And so 
Go there and be inspired in whatever you create and see what may show up and be in the love and the caress of passion as a divine instrument of spirit into matter to express what spirit would like to cause and perhaps not you. Now, that's the other thing about real passionate action in a creative sense of dance or music or written work or teaching verbally or whatever it is. Is the spirit there and you're kind of maybe just in the background letting spirit do whatever it does to cause all the beauty and grace of spirit to show up in the physical. That's total passionate action of creative expression as can be if you're transfusing and if you're light motioning and swaying with spirit in the body. Spirit doesn't always descend in the body and many on earth never have spirit ever descend which is a very sad state of existence in our opinion. It leads to a lot of fear and uncertainty and unknowing of who you are and where to go and what to do in life. That's the state of most in humanity in the opinion of the angels that are working with us today. There are always angels involved with passion. They won't descend until you're in a state of passion or have moved your assemblage point into a state of passion. And then in the state of passion and whatever you're envisioning to do or you're actually in the action of doing, the angels descend and they anoint you with sacred keys that bond you to another dream that they would like to express unto humanity or unto your audience or unto whatever you're enjoying. And in that, spirit is there and present in your work and that will inspire others who are not, not normally touched by spirit in most all that they do in their lives, you see. That's a sad society for spirit. It's pretty much vacant and it's getting worse, unfortunately. So finding the passion of you is almost more important to stay in touch with spirit because they're departing, departing from the planet as is choosing to go extinct. They're departing nature too. That may be sad for you who sway with nature and go out there to find your passion or love of life only to find it vacant and hollow and wonder why you feel sad into the night after you hike the mountainside or walk the beach and you're just going, something's wrong and I'm very sorry it's turning out to be that way, but it is. In finding passion, you have a tendency to attract the angels to you first and then other forces that remain to observe humanity and even Tao and Tao too, who enjoy the passion and the love of whatever you're trying to do. There can be a passion of it, of in a corporate sense of some project you really believe in that you choose to take on and do. There can be a passion in a small business too that either you own or somebody else does that you feel in love with whatever they're trying to do or provide or take care of and others in the world around where the business thrives. There are many opportunities to find passion in certain places that sway. Often the spa is good for sway and therefore passion can arise in spa work 
like massage. It can arise in restaurants due to the sway of the need to make beautiful dining in the ha- in the habitat of humanity. There can be passion in cooking of all kinds, and you see that is one of the big passions that there are. There aren't passions in department stores or malls, so I wouldn't advise work in that genre. There may be passion in the plant industry, yet where people want beautiful flowers or arrangements or something grand to put in their home and make them feel special. There is passion in certain objectives of maybe adorning the body in beautiful clothes that feel sacred in some way, and that can be a passionate stance of caressing the body in beauty and grace rather than something machine-made and sold at Walmart or Kmart or some other kind of mart that is unappealing in the live wave motion that is descending on top of it today. If you put clothes on that or used like that in a dispassionate stance, it may disinaugurate your passion. So be careful what you wear or what you dress yourself in day to day and make sure you feel loved in each garment you put on and donate or throw the rest away and perhaps have fewer wardrobe items. The passion of spirit said, be beautiful in everything you wear in a new kind of way which is of the goddess of our hearts. Because that's what they would call Asarana many times in the changes in her life. It wasn't always easy to rise up to the change, and even though it sounds magical, there were fears and concerns and tears and lots of things she was worried about. That's just the nature of this planet, unfortunately. It has a tendency to cause fears and tears to arise as you try to decide what to do new and then go out in action in the world. There's a lot of fear and trepidation and all these things that can show up and the best thing to do is to caress with spirit who descend into matter. Then they live the dream in a way that's magical and divine and then when that unfolds, there's no fear at all. It's just there to be lived, spirit into matter, which is how the physical body of all star seas was designed to operate. You were never designed to operate spiritless or soulless or devoid of anything of intelligence in the realms of the non-physical that surround you. That's the sad thing about humanity. They are not aware or wise enough. They have nothing around them much that has any wisdom, so they listen to these weird creatures that do all their weirdness, and then they act weird too in some way or they don't understand what to do to make life work out better for them, which is very sad. So the body was meant to be a channel for spirit to come in and operate with you and through you, and in the love of their love of you and the love of the creative objective, they dance and they sing and they play and they sway with you. Most of you who have had experiences where you felt very passionate about what you were doing and you learned to light wave sway in that direction. 
you learned that life worked out better if you felt that way and it just maybe fell away over time or you made a change and suddenly the passion of you flew. If it flew, know that you can rearrange your assemblage point to motion into the caress of the passion of you again and go there and flow there and then find what is next on this plate of dreaming for you that is best. That is our recommendation for all of you, not just you or me, but all of you because in the world of you, the magic of the magic if it's missing leads to dullness and depression. So if you're in the dullness and depression, you need to trigger the passion to rise and then you find a degree of change that you can go motion and you can find something in your life you can sway with first. That's the first objective. You have to find something you can sway with and feel passionate about. And then as you do that, it will cause a renewal and a revival and a change in you that's most amazing. I don't care what it is. If it's something you fall in love with, that's an action of activity that could be a, f a first start. If it's a love of music or if it's a love of dance and that's another good start. If it's a love of being out in nature in the passionate action of emotion that you care for, start there. If it's an act of something else you like to do that you never thought of before. Perhaps you need to go take a painting class or a poetry class or a pottery class or something else to get your hands on busy. Learn to knit or learn to sew or learn to do something else that's creative and maybe that's where your passion will start and out of that something else will bloom that perhaps can be shared or sold or provide economy for you too. Much passion does create economy and it comes through the people that share in the passion of what you create and nothing else. They are happy to share them, their money with you if they love what you do or love what you cook or love who you are as you express or however it may go. So passion isn't really money. It's just that people like passionate people because they want to feel passionate too. And if they don't, they will go in that direction because they need to be near you or need to share in what you create to bring a little piece of passion home to their house that maybe is dull and lifeless in the loss of sway and other things that are going on in the human system. Therefore, the passion is really about you and what you bloom into and not about money at all. And yet we know in this society, you need money to keep going and money to foster new things and money to pay the bills and buy the clothes and do whatever you do. Even as a creative artisan, you need to buy the in, in, innate materials to create whatever you're going to create. And that's very sad in a way that it just can't be for free and available for each that desires to create. You are starseeds and are meant to be born in that kind of society and it's frustrating sometimes to realize that you can't live that way and sometimes that leads to depression too. So once you're way out of the depression, please find the passion of you because 
that will ignite something else that says, well, just create anyway. You don't have to create for anyone at all. Just go paint that pottery or go paint that soap or go design that piece of clothing or go cook that magical meal. Go do something in the passion of you and then in that suddenly the issues of monetary greed vaporize because you're in love with you doing what you were meant to do in a creative action with spirit into matter. Then your heart blooms, your mind sings, and your body feels good. And then perhaps wherever you felt passion for, that was amazing, can take flight and be sold or do other things in this lifeline of yours. Passion is a song all of its own. And so when you go into passion, there's a song that the angels start to sing in the estuary of you and also in your heart, in your mind. Now, the song is a melee of something that angels have sung for humans over time in all creations you've ever existed and even participatory of the creative action of something wonderful. And so as you create in the passion of you, the song catches on the light waves of you and the more passionate you are, the more the angels sing and then they start to sing it into the work of you. As the work of you sings, then it's caught on the airwaves of those that share in wherever you have sung, lived, danced, or wherever you have caused in the creative action of yours. As Sarada knew it too because the angels sang to her website aligning with earth and natural world angels were going and participated. People, people read it and felt something deep and meaningful in them as they share in this way of nature. Spirit of the website is committed to seeing pair and as run it through and you through too for as long as you live and the information inspires you. That is their gift for you because there's many things changing and it's difficult when things die or fly away. And then you're left alone once again, not knowing who you are in you or what is divine or true for you in this time period of many, many changes in the life of the planet at large. You can't control this because it's a planetary problem, but as you find the passion of you, the orange crimson color calls spirit to you once again. Then the depression can lift and the creative action take flight and you can find something you love to do in you. And then life takes on a new melody in your home, in your kitchen, in your artisan room, or out in nature if it's the passion of the ski, flight, downhill, or whatever it is that you do. In it, it changes and metamorphosizes everything around you. And the room changes in its colors in a crimson at first and then other light wave rays that are needed to fulfill upon the creative project that may may feel quite that may feel quite divine for you. Our wish for each of you is to find at least one action in this life of yours that you feel absolutely passionate about. Sometimes if you feel passionately big enough, it may inspire a new career. 
Sometimes if it's passionate and you love it, it's a second career where you share your artisan goods or whatever you've fallen in love with in this life of yours. Sometimes it's just for you to adorn or share as gifts or whatever you wish to do. Whatever it is you feel passionate about, it's important for you to remember that love is the foundation of passion. It's a love of you for you to create something that spirit with spirit that cares and sways and cares for each that may share in your creative projects. There are other projects that can be very much filled with care and they may involve the animal industry. Pets are deep beacons of love for many humans because they have a hard time loving each other, unfortunately. And this is sad because in this society, people love their pets sometimes more than they love their spouses or children, which is a sad statement to the affair of the heart of humanity. But in a state of passion, if you raise animals and show them or breed them, they can be very divine pets for others to open their heart and to receive healing. If you love working with horses or larger creatures, then the love of the horse will produce a beautiful hole that may be not be there outside of the passion of you to breed horses in a beautiful way that's gracious and loving for others to experience. Animals are a very unusual act of love in humanity, not just now, but throughout the ages. Somehow people love their pets and they love them in ways that were very unusual. Sometimes they also abuse them out of their own need to abuse something. And that's very sad to see a wounded animal just like it's heartbreaking to see a wounded child or a wounded battered female or male. Whatever it is, the brutality is not passion. It's pure rage of spirit into matter that wants to kill. So don't confuse passion with anger. It's not the same octave. It's not the same expression. It's not anything but what it is, which is a ray that lets spirit descend into matter to create out of the love of the heart and love of the sway and the love of the divinity of all things. All things are divine. All things can spark divinity. It's just we live in a society that doesn't remember how to do that very easily. And they have tried as they go to Tibet and they visit the monks or they visit other places that are spiritual retreats to try to find their divinity. And unfortunately, it's generally lost in the homescape and businesscape that they live within and have to because they need to earn their economy in order to pay their bills and all these things that are very sad for many people to witness. And so we speak to passion as a ray not of red, and humans can enter the crimson ray that are non seas and speak to a big passion in themselves for time. But generally they lose it in about two years and can't really reinvent it. Whereas Darcy's do reinvent their passion sometimes over and over again. It was Peter, Paul, and Mary that was the seed and the others were seedlings. And so they re 
inaugurated their passion and took them through the decades even into another time period of aging health and failing not wealth but other things may be failing in their lives. But whatever it is, seas and ceilings can spawn passionate action over projects that carry you forward in new directions. If your passion needs people to gather with you to foster, then you need other ceilings to be near you or other seas. Sometimes sea to sea passion is the most amazing and it will call ceilings to you too. And so whatever it is that you want to do in the passion of you, remember that it's really to fulfill your heart, mind, soul, and spirit, and perhaps nothing else. If it creates an amazing action of creative expression you love to share, then please share it and keep going until whatever it is that you wish to do other than maybe work for something you don't care for very much takes flight. That's really all we have to say today. We bless you in the deep love of the two, in this way of the divine, in the caress of spirit into matter, in the love of wherever it is you wish to share or to experience that, is, that ignites the passion of you into feeling passionate again about being alive. For that's the real purpose about the assemblage point of passion, is to be passionate about your life so that you love to live and carry on in everything else that you do. We'll put you in that for the next few hours and let you envision something new maybe you would like to foster in this life of yours. We bless you and we caress you and we love you as thou and thou always as our darling human starseeds that came to a foreign planet to try to do something else maybe that other humans cannot do. We embrace you as you carry forward maybe in a new direction that is passionate for you to do. Namaste.